Hi everyone, you're watching the lab demos at cloudsecuritymasterclass.com. Gateway VPC endpoints enable workloads in the VPC to connect to Amazon S3 and DynamoDB without making the connection go through the public internet. So, if you have an EC2 instance in a private subnet in a VPC, and you do not have any connectivity to the internet for this EC2 instance, so you do not have a MAC gateway, and you do not have an internet gateway, so basically there is no public connectivity. And you want to connect to Amazon managed services like S3 Bucket and DynamoDB. The way to do that is via Gateway VPC endpoints because Gateway VPC endpoints are able to connect your private workloads living in a VPC to Amazon managed services while making sure your connection stays in the Amazon backbone network. So the network, so the connection does not traverse the public internet at all. One thing to remember about Gateway VPC endpoints is that they are not to be confused with interface endpoints, which are powered via AWS Private Link. Yes, there are two kinds of endpoints in VPC. One is VPC, one is Gateway endpoints, and the other are interface endpoints. Let's see some of the differences between those two endpoints. One, Gateway endpoints are free to use, so there is no charge for people to use those, while interface endpoints do have a charge for usage. Gateway endpoints can only be created for S3 and DynamoDB. So if you're looking to enable private connectivity to other managed services, you will have to use interface endpoints. The third big difference between these two endpoints is the mechanism by which these endpoints operate. Gateway endpoints creates a prefix list which can be attached to a route in a VPC, and we'll see this in the demo in this video while interface endpoints creates an ENI in the VPC and uses AWS private link. Don't worry if you do not understand these differences yet. We will cover private link and interface endpoints in the next video, and you shall see this difference when you see these services working in action at that point. For this lab, we'll focus on gateway endpoints. We'll first do a setup, exactly the same as you see in this screen. We'll create a VPC subnet an EC2 instance within it. We'll make sure there is no public internet connectivity for that EC2 instance. And then we'll try to connect that EC2 instance to an S3 bucket using gateway endpoints. Okay, so we're going to start the setup for this lab by creating a VPC. And uh, we'll also be creating an EC2 instance within this VPC and an S3 bucket. But let's go ahead and in the VPC console, let's click on create VPC. And uh, I want to create a VPC and give it a name of uh, we'll just keep the defaults for IPv4 but um, and I just want to have one submit within this VPC and uh, zero public submits but just one private submit and as we discussed for this demo we want to create a private submit which does not have any connectivity to the outside world so there will be no NAND gateway even in the VPC creation screen, you can see an option of creating a VPC endpoint gateway, right? So AWS does offer this default option for creating the VPC endpoint gateway. We are not going to use that um, in this video so that you can see what happens in the background when this VPC is created. So we'll create this endpoint manually. So I'll click on none here and um, keeping all the defaults and just verifying with the preview, we'll be creating one VPC. Uh, with one private subnet and this route table created by default. So I'll click on create VPC. With my VPC now created, I will go ahead into the S3 section and create an S3 bucket. We will use this S3 bucket to test the connectivity from uh, EC2 instance to this S3 bucket. So I'll click on create S3 and we'll give it the name outside S3. And we'll keep everything here as default and just click on create bucket. Attention won't exist. And all right, so our S3 bucket is created. And I'm, what, I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add an object to this bucket. And later on in the video, we'll try to get this object from the EC2 instance. So let me add an object here to this bucket. So I've added a test.txt um, object here, and we can click on it and look at, it con look at its contents. 
So this is just a text file that says demo text written in S3 object. So now let's go ahead and create our EC2 instance. But before we create an EC2 instance, we would need to provide this EC2 instance with some permissions to be able to access this S3 bucket. So let's get, go to IAM first and create that role. So in the role section, I will select my AWS services, services EC2 to which this role will be attached. And uh, I will uh, not attach any permissions to it now, but I'll add an inline permission later on. As you can see, this role can be assumed by an EC2 instance. With the role created, I would add an inline policy to it. In the inline policy, I'm going to mention S3 service, and I'm going to allow all actions to this S3. Now, this is definitely against the principles of least privilege. But I'm doing this specifically because I want to also evaluate what happens when a permission is being allowed from the IAM policy, which is uh, what we're creating now, versus what happens when that same permission is denied or not even allowed in the VPC endpoint policy, which we are going to create later on. So I'm just keeping this S3 star for testing purposes. In the resources, I'm going to add, add the ARM for the S3 that we have created. And with that, my role policy for the role is created. It allows S3 all actions to the S3 bucket that we just created. And so with that, this policy is now attached to this role, and this role can now be assumed by an EC2 instance. So now I'll go ahead to the EC2 section and create our EC2 instance. We'll select the default Amazon Linux image. I would not need a key pair for this exercise because I'm going to use um, the EC2 user data to test the connectivity from EC2 to S3. If you have not worked with your user data, you could create, um, you could, you know, use SSH to log into the CCT, EC2 and then try to connect to that S3. But since we are not allowing any public access to the EC2, you would not be able to essentially um, SSH into it unless you create a bastion host which is attached to a public subnet with a public ip um, so i'll leave that to you if you need to do that but i'm using user data which uh, runs in a script whenever an ec2 is run for the very first time and that will allow uh, me to test the connectivity to the s3 bucket for network second set settings i will attach the ec2 to the vpc that we just created and there is only one subnet it will use that and we won't be attaching any public IP addresses. Uh, for the security group, um, I uh, want to just, I don't need the security group since I won't be SSH into this EC2 or I won't be having any connectivity to this EC2. So I can just um, select the default one that comes with the VPC, but we, we don't really have to use the security group. And going into the advanced details, that's where I have to select the role which I just created and this role would provide permissions to this EC2 to be able to reach out to the S3 bucket so this is very important and then going down to the user data and as, as I explained before I want to use the user data to be able to run a script whenever this EC2 instance launches and that script would essentially reach out to S3 and uh, try to make a connection so here's the script that we're using it's a bash script it's creating a directory it's seeding into that directory and then it's copying data from the s3 bucket so it's running the get object command and um, i just want to make sure this bucket name is same so i updated the bucket name and so it's going to try to get object uh, this test.txt object from this s3 bucket um, and then it will this the contents of the directory and it will try to print the, the file that it has downloaded, right? And similar, similarly, it would also then, as a last step, try to delete that same object from that bucket, right? And I purposely kept this two commands just to 
verify the permissions so you will be able to see if this ec2 is able to get object and you will also be able to see if this ec2 is able to delete object or not so with that our ec2 setup is done now we'll click on launch instance so i'll pause the video and come back when the instance state is um, is running and then when the logs are available for this ec2 instance for us to be able to see if the connection to s3 has been made Okay, so the instance is now in a running state and there has been sufficient amount of time for the initial system logs to be generated. So we can go ahead and check those out. Now, if you haven't worked with user data, EC2 user data before, this is a good time to see how you can see if the user data script has actually run inside the EC2 and get the logs from there. So all we're going to do is click on this EC2, go to actions, click on monitor and troubleshoot and click on get system log. And this is the all the system logs that were run for that uh, for this EC2 when it was run for the first time. So if we go down this, we can see this uh, print echo command that we had in our uh, user data, which was copying data from S3. And as you can see, just after that, there is a connection timeout uh, when the EC2 is trying to reach out to this uh, S3 URL which basically tells you this time out that there is no issue with permissions it has is ha it hasn't reached the point where it's, it knows that does it have permissions but since there is no network path for it to go to this timeout is happening because of that similarly if you go down you can see the same thing is happening for the delete command as well so with this we have ascertained that the ec2 instance does not have a network path to reach out to s3 bucket since it's in a private subnet with no connectivity with the outside world in the next part of this video, let's see how we can use VPC gateway endpoints to resolve this issue. Now we're back in the VPC menu um, and we'll create our very first uh, VPC endpoint gateway. And uh, I, I clicked on this endpoint section within VPC dashboard and I'm going to click on create endpoint. In the service category, I'm going to select AWS services and search for S3 since we want the endpoint to be created for S3 service. And uh, four results pop up, but if you see, there is only one of type gateway. So I'll be selecting that. Next, I'm gonna select the VPC with which I want this endpoint to be attached and the route table for which uh, I want the route to this endpoint to be attached. Once I'm done creating this endpoint, I'll show you how this route would look like um, after AWS has populated it. The last important thing that we'll set up for this VPC um, endpoint is the VPC endpoint policy. And uh, as the description says here, the endpoint policy control access to this service. Um, in terms of the format, this is pretty similar to the IAM policy or the resource policy. And uh, I'm gonna copy a custom JSON here and then I'll explain to you what that JSON does. So this custom JSON policy essentially provides S3 get object and S3 list object, these two permissions, to any AWS principal and any resource as well. So um, it would be good to see how this policy is evaluated against the EC2 IAM role policy that we have provided. So for the EC2 role, we have provided S3 star, which means essentially all access but we are already only providing these two permissions in the VPC endpoint policy. So we'll see in our test with the EC2 instance how these policies are evaluated um, and we'll, we'll see how that goes. But for now we have provided only get and list object permissions to all principles to all resources. And then we'll click on create endpoint. So with that our endpoint is now created. And uh, let's see what happens in the background when AWS created this endpoint. So if I go to the subnet screen and um, I select the, sub the VPC that we are working with, and we can see in the route table attached to this subnet, we have a new route. Uh, all subnets come with a default route, which you can see here, which is the local uh, for uh, private connectivity within the subnet. But we have this new route which has been created after we created the VPC gateway endpoint. And this route, um, what this essentially means is that for any destination for this prefix list, send the 
traffic to this particular VPC endpoint, which is the endpoint that we just created. So what is this prefix list? Let's click on that. And this takes you to the manage prefix list section within the VPC dashboard. And uh, this prefix list is actually the S3 endpoint name for the US East 1 region, which makes sense. That's that's the service for which we created the endpoint. So going back to our route table, what's happening is that anytime the destination for the VPC traffic is an S3 bucket in the US was one region, which is identified by this prefix list, the target for that traffic would be the VPC endpoint um, as described here. And this is how Amazon handles the backbone network connectivity from uh, private resources within the VPC to um, manage services like S3 using VPC gateway endpoints. So let's go ahead and test if our VPC gateway endpoint is working as expected. We'll be creating a similar EC2 instance as we did last time. And um, the reason why we have to create a new EC2 instance is because the user data script only runs when the EC2 instance is, um, is installed for the first time. Um, it does, it cannot be run after the fact. So we'll have to create another EC2 instance. So I've now created an EC2 instance exactly similar in configuration to the last one with the user data and the IAM role attached to it. And this is in a running state for some time now, so we should be able to take a look at the logs. And um, yep. So with the logs, now we can see that after copying the data from S3, we got this ex except of output from the get bucket command. And essentially, it's able to get the bucket object now. I don't see any errors here. Uh, when listing the directory contains, it's able to see this text.txt file that has been copied from the S3 bucket. And uh, in trying to print the, the, the file, you can see the, the, the text written in the object, which is demo text written S3 object. So it's pretty well nicely able to download the bucket and get the contents of it. And it's also able to delete the object within the bucket. So if I open the S3 bucket in my console now, I will click on the bucket name and as you can see there is no objects within this bucket right now. So the user data script, the EC2 instance essentially, was not only able to get object from the bucket but was also able to delete object within the bucket. So this is very interesting. And the reason why it's interesting is because um, the, if you look at the VPC endpoint policy, we have specifically said allow get object and list object. We have not mentioned anything about the delete object. So how is it that the EC2 is able to get that permission? The answer to this lies with the IAM policy that we have attached to the role. So in the IAM policy, we specifically said that we are allowing all actions on the S3 bucket. And that is exactly how EC2 gets its permissions from. So if you haven't watched our review on uh, policy evaluation between resource policies and uh, IAM policies, please do check that out. Uh, in the context of VPC endpoints, the resource policy is the endpoint policy attached to the endpoint. And the IAM policy is the one that's attached to the identity, which is the EC2. Now, in cases where the access is within the same account, if the, uh, the permission is allowed either in the EC2 policy, the role policy, or if it's allowed in the endpoint policy, it would be allowed. So it's a cumulative or it's an addition of the permissions in both of these policies. Please do check, check out that video to understand more about how policy evaluation works. Uh, but this is it for this lab walkthrough. We created a VPC um, we created an EC2 and showed how connectivity from a private workload uh, within a VPC can be obtained in managed AWS services like S3 using VPC gateway endpoints.